tip 31. If you use cross-validation and your samples are not in an arbitrary order, shuffling may be required to get meaningful results. And here's how you shuffle. Okay, so let's talk about cross-validation. So normally, when you are using cross-validation, you probably pass an integer to cross-validation, namely CV equals five, for example, to do five-fold cross-validation. One thing you might not know is that that does not shuffle your samples when splitting. So in other words, if you have 100 rows, for example, in your X, and you use cross foul score with CV equals five, then rows one through 20 of X will be in a test fold, while rows 21 through 100 will be in a training fold. And then the next time around, rows 21 through 40 will be in a test fold, and rows 1 through 20 and 41 through 100 will be in a training fold, and so on. So there's no shuffling going on. That is why you get the same cross-fall score every time you run it, because there's nothing random about the cross-validation process. So the obvious question is, do you need to shuffle? Well, if your uh, rows in X are in an arbitrary order, then no, you do not need to shuffle. Shuffling will make no meaningful difference. If the rows are not in an arbitrary order, then yes, you should shuffle. And one example of this is, let's say your data set is sorted by the target value. So let's pretend it was a classification problem and all of the class zero were at the top and all of class one were at the bottom just because that's how your data set was sorted. That is an example where you definitely need to shuffle. So if you decide that you do need to shuffle during cross-validation, I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, let me just emphasize, if you are in a scenario where you need to shuffle, but you don't, you will get unreliable cross-validation results. If you're in a situation where you don't need to shuffle, but you do, well, that's fine. That's not a problem. So if you like, you can just always shuffle. There's one exception to that related to like time-based data, and I'm not going to get into that. But generally speaking, shuffling isn't going to harm things, and it will definitely help improve the reliability of your cross-validation scores if you have any kind of sorting in your data set. With that being said, how do you shuffle if you need to shuffle? Well, you use a cross-validation iterator, which is what these objects are, this KF and this SKF. Those are cross-validation iterators, and you pass those to cross foul score instead of an integer. And in the iterator, which is an object, you define the number of folds, whether or not you want to shuffle, and you set a random state. Now, you're usually using this because you need to shuffle. So I'm going to put shuffle equals true. And you set a random state for reproducibility because once you're shuffling things, there's not reproducibility without a random state. Now, the next logical question would be, why are there two different iterators, a k-fold and a stratified k-fold? Well, k-fold is good for regression problems because it does shuffling if you set it to. Stratified k-fold is good for classification problems because it also does stratification when shuffling. So what is stratification? That is when you preserve the class proportions within each fold. So what does that mean? Well, if your target value, your y, is 30% class 0 and 70% class 1, then doing stratified splitting will try to do 30% class 0 and 70% class 1 in every single fold that it creates. So it will try to duplicate those class proportions when splitting. And that results in more reliable cross-validation scores. So you only use stratified k-fold for classification because it doesn't make sense for regression. Final notes, grid search CV also does not shuffle, but just like cross foul score, you can pass an iterator to the CV argument in order to do shuffling if you need it. And train test split 
in case you're wondering, does do shuffling. 